Welcome to today's episode of The Only Thing That Matters, getting your startup to product market fit here on Chicago Founders TV. Why do we call it The Only Thing That Matters? Because when product market fit was first popularized as a term by Mark Andreessen, he titled his blog post The Only Thing That Matters, explaining that if you don't get your startup to product market fit, it's dead. We bring you clips from our Founder Stories interviews with Hall of Fame level entrepreneurs providing the insights and expertise that allowed them to achieve product market fit, so you can too. Today's episode features Andrew Sage, the founder of Kira. They're the leader in electronic discovery. They're an enterprise SaaS company you may never have heard of, but they're one of the largest and most profitable SaaS startups outside of Silicon Valley. We're featuring Andrew because during his founder story interview, he described a unique and very effective way that they nailed product market fit early on, despite not knowing the electronic discovery space before they started. Here's Andrew telling that story. Uh, so at Kikura, we make a, a software product called Relativity. And Relativity is a document management system designed for discovery. And so what, what is legal discovery? So what is legal discovery? So when uh, there, maybe there's two companies that are involved in a dispute, they're suing each other. Uh, side A needs to hand over all information about the matter over to side B and vice versa. And uh, if you've ever been involved in one of these things, it's, it's big, it's messy, it's nasty, and it's really, really expensive. And what we do is we take all this information, and in modern business, it's the emails, the documents, the spreadsheets. That's am it's amazing if you think that literally people go through millions of emails. And so imagine the alternative of going through millions of emails if you didn't have it. I mean, it's crazy, like, uh, you know, not even as long as maybe like in 2005, um, you know, there's still tons of law firms that were just printing this stuff out and then having like all these associates just read them manually and, uh, you know, the whole digit is um, making this stuff digital and computerized was actually a bit more recent. So you're a programmer by background, not a lawyer. So how yeah. did the, where did the idea come from? Yeah, so uh, programmer by trade. Um, I started, I started Kikura back in 2001 as a, as a software consulting firm, and so our business was you know, building custom software products for our clients. And in 2002, a, a law firm hired us to uh, build this document management system. Um, it was fully in Lardner, and we, uh, we gave them the initial bid on uh, the project. They're like, whoa, this uh, price tag is way too high. I'm like, well, you know, if we keep the intellectual property, I'll give you a 40% discount. They're like, deal. <laughs> and, uh, and that's how we kept the IP to the project. And how you became a product company. Yeah. yeah. And, but that was, that was in 2002. That was oh, in 2002. Wow. And then we, you know, we kept the, the IP. No, in 2002, we started the negotiations. We finally closed the deal in 2004. And, uh, but it wasn't until 2007 where we kind of pivoted to the business and we moved away from consulting to just focus on, wow. on relativity. We always wanted to be a software company. And even when we first started Kcura, we had this, this tool called the K-Store Explorer, which was like a, kind of like a development platform for the web storage system. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that was like our first product and that didn't go anywhere. And, uh, over time, we would do uh, all these other projects and we would productize them. We had like a collaborative extranet for a law firm. We had, uh, that was called Convergence. So were they all, were the original projects all things that became, um, started as projects and then became products? Yes. Got it. Yes. So how did you figure out which product to ride? Like, um, which, was the, which was the one? I didn't really figure anything out. It was the one that people wanted to buy. Well, but talk about yeah. that because I think that sounds easy now, but... Yeah. When you're looking at it, figuring it out, you know, there's lots of ways you can go. A lot of them lead to dead ends. Yeah, you know, I think it's just part of the hustle and, you know, building a business. So we had these three different products. And, and, and over time, like our consulting practice shifted to uh, just focus specifically on building solutions for these large law firms. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and so as we, we'd be in there, like pitching like other work, we'd like, hey, we, by, the, by the way, we've got these other, other solutions. And we got this extra net, we got the data management tool for you, and we got this litigation tool. And the litigation tool was the one that seemed like had the, the greatest need in the marketplace. You know, we sold it once, and we sold it again, and then sold it a third time, and then the fourth time we sold the, uh, the solution, you know, we kind of knew we had something there. Interesting. So 
I want to go back. One of the things we talk about here at Founder Stories is founder market fit. Yeah. And there's teams to be, there are two ways founders can sort of figure out their space. I've never seen a successful founder who didn't understand the business they're in from the inside out. One way is to be the person who has the problem, right? Sometimes you just code your own solution to it. Uh, the other is to learn it, for, you know, from the inside out. Um, you obviously learned it because you weren't doing discovery as lawyers. Right. Yeah. And uh, so talk a little bit about maybe your, that non-traditional path. I and mean, I know you did it to make money and do things, but what was the benefit of being a software, of being a consulting firm to find and figure out the market? And would you, did that just happen to work then or would you recommend that to others? I, I, I love the work that we did as, as, a, as a consulting business. I thought it was really, uh, I thought it was really rewarding and fun to walk into a business and speak with people who are experts in whatever their domain is and get quickly like ramped up and mm -hmm. then talk at their level and help them solve their problems. And um, I thought that was really cool. And I think, and I think the kind of the advantage in like going into a problem space completely green is that you don't have any preconceived notions. And, uh, and I think it really worked well for us in building the, the litigation platform and that like all the other what we would call next gen platforms that were coming into the marketplace at the time were all biting ideas from like the legacy systems. Because hmm. that was their frame of reference. That right. was what, that's, that's what the customers wanted. The customers wanted like a better summation. They wanted better, better concordance, right? And like we've never seen these things or used them. And you just told us what the problem was and we would just give you like a solution that was, you know, the best fit to solve your problem. You need to make sure that your, your customers ultimately bought into your solution and they are going to be committed to give you the feedback and work with you. And more importantly, be patient with you as mm -hmm. like you work out the kinks because you're not going to get it right. Mm -hmm. And there's probably going to be a ton of bugs. And so you, you, need, you need people to have like that, that vested interest in ensuring that you're successful. And one of the ways... In, and kind of guaranteeing that is an exchange some money. And I think, you know, we, another area where we got really lucky is that we figured out a, a, a business model that really, really worked. And, um, and we didn't really get that lift until the end of like 2007. Um, and we decided like that one of the best ways that we can take the product to market was to partner with these litigation consulting firms. So there's all these consulting firms that help a company through a large litigation project. And we can, we can effectively partner with them and they'll, they'll buy our software, and they'll deploy it in their data center, and they'll charge a huge markup for it, and they'll make tons of money, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll go to market with them. But we didn't, we didn't necessarily like, uh, do like a, a, a rev share, right? We basically made it where they have to do a three-year commitment by 100 users. They cut us a check, and at the time it was 70 grand, and it was enough skin in the game where they were really committed to the technology. And, uh, and so then the consulting firm would, would work really hard to make sure that the, the technology worked and the ultimate end user would have a good experience. And then when the end user would have a good experience, they would then, and like, like law firms are effectively like a, a federation of sole proprietorships, right? And so if partner A had a good experience with, with the product, um, she might tell like, you know, the partner down the hallway, mm -hmm. and then when she had a new project, then she would request relativity as well.